So in this video, I'm going to review some of the trig um, angle addition identities. Trig angle addition identities. Now there are lots of these, and I'm not going to be able to cover them all in this video, but I will share um, how to quickly go through and derive uh, many of them that are at least commonly used in trigonometry classrooms. So this story is not going to start with a proof, but just a definition. We're going to start with uh, the definition of the sine of the sum of two angles. Now all of these identities are useful for many different reasons, and they're helpful in understanding relationships between the sines of sums and angles, and differences of angles, and cosines, and tangents of sums and differences of angles but in this video I want to show you that if you know this formula which is uh, the sine of a times the cosine of b plus the sine of b times the cosine of a if you get if you got this formula I'm just kind of I think I'll put a rectangle around it it's one of our key formulas here that's not helpful let me just uh, draw this right here. This is one of the, the foundational formulas from which many of the others are quickly derived. And the other one would be your cosine addition formula, that the cosine of a plus b, this equals the cosine of a times the cosine of b minus the sine of a times the sine of b. Now these two formulas right, are the ones I would say you need to know. So now we can derive all sorts of things. I could say that I want to know what the sine of a minus b equals. Well that's the same thing as the sine of a plus negative b. And that, according to this definition right here, is the sine of a times the cosine of negative b then plus the sine of negative b times the cosine of a. And that simplifies to sine of a minus b becomes sine of a times the cosine of b because if you remember, cosine is an even function. So the cosine of negative b is the same thing as the cosine of b. And sine is an odd function, so the sine of negative b is, is the same thing as the as negative sine of b. It's about whether they're even or odd functions. And we get another common definition. You don't need to memorize, you can just derive it like this, but that's what you would get. And we can do the same thing here. Suppose you want to know what the cosine of a minus b equals. Well, that's got to be equal to the cosine of a plus negative b which is cosine of a times the cosine of negative b minus the sine of a times the sine of negative b. And, and again, we go through the same process here. The cosine of a minus b would then equal cosine of a cosine of b because the cosine of negative b and the cosine of b are the same thing for even functions. That's always true. And then over here, the sine of negative b is the opposite of the sine of b. And we can put that opposite ne or that negative one, we can multiply it in the front here to get plus sine of a sine of b. And we have another key definition. And then we might keep going. What if I want to know uh, what the sine of 2a equals? Okay. Well, the sine of 2a, let me just write this out. The sine of 2a it's got to be equal to the sine of a plus a. And this is equal to the sine of a times the cosine of a plus the sine of a times the cosine of a. So it's two groups of sine and cosine a. Two groups of sine a times the cosine of a. And this is another key formula here. So we have the sum, difference, this is a double angle formula. And we can do the same thing for cosine. We can say, well, I want to know the cosine of 2a equals. Well, that's got to be equal to the cosine of a plus a. I wrote b 
a plus a, which is equal to the cosine of a times the cosine of a minus the sine of a times the sine of a. And this breaks down really in interesting ways. This is the cosine squared of a minus the sine squared of a, which I, oh, I find that interesting, that formula as well. But we can go further. We can use our Pythagorean identity. So we could say, since we know that the sine squared of a plus the cosine squared of a equals 1, we then typically can write this in two different ways. Um, it must also be true from here that 1 minus the sine squared of a equals the cosine squared of a, and 1 minus the cosine squared of a equals the sine squared of a. And that these can be substituted into here to create two classic formulas. So the first one, so keeping this in mind is our Pythagorean identity. Right, keeping this in mind, we can transform our equation up there to cosine of 2a equals the cosine squared of a. And I should, you know, I wrote, sorry, I wrote a capital A here. I'll put a lowercase a. That would be confusing. Um, that was just a mistake on my part, sorry. Minus the sine squared of a is 1 minus the cosine squared of a. And that equals cosine squared of a minus 1 minus a minus cosine squared is plus cosine squared a. Okay. And what does that reduce to? Well, that's the cosine of 2a. And this is a classic formula here, equals 2 cosine squared a minus 1. So here's another big formula that's used a lot. Uh, there's another double angle formula. But also, we could have uh, rewritten that in a different way. Instead of substituting in the value of uh, 1 minus cosine squared a for sine squared a, we could say, all right, the cosine of 2a equals cosine squared a minus sine squared a. Well, cosine squared a is equal to 1 minus the sine squared a. And then we can subtract sine squared a. All right, so that becomes 1 minus 2 times the sine squared of a. And this is another classic formula. Now, we can keep going with all of these, but I just wanted you to see what these formulas typically look like. So, and I want to show a couple more. Um, they start with our addition formulas here, then we have our difference formulas. We have our double angle, angle formula for sine. And using the addition formula, we can derive with the Pythagorean identity, uh, the double angle formulas for cosine. And we can go further if, in both cases, if we isolate these formulas, so let's isolate this one. First, we'll say, I want to get, I'm going to write it in this order, 2 cosine squared of a minus 1 equals the cosine of 2a. I want to get cosine squared all by itself, so I'm going to add 1 and divide by 2. Cosine squared of a equals the 1 plus the cosine of 2a divided by 2. And then I want to find out what the cosine equals and the cosine squared. It's usually more useful in problems. So I take the square root of both sides. So this equals, move this equal sign out of the way, the plus or minus square root of this. And usually this is written as a half angle formula, which you can get by saying instead of cosine of a, cosine of a over 2. So this is useful when you maybe know uh, Maybe not what the angle is exactly that you're looking for, but the half angle. And that's going to equal plus or minus 1 plus the cosine of 2 times, we're substituting a over 2 now, over 2. And that means that the cosine of a over 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 1 plus the cosine of a. Right? These two's cancel over 2. Now the miraculous thing is um, that we, we're going to also derive this in a moment, but the sine of a over 2 
is going to equal the same thing, but look what's different. It's just 1 minus the cosine of a over 2. Isn't that cool how close these two formulas are? And that just comes from playing around with this formula here. And I'm going to rewrite it as 1 minus twice the sine squared of a equals the cosine of 2a. I'm going to um, now subtract 1 and divide by negative 2. So the sine squared of a equals, um, I'm going to put negative 1, subtract that 1, plus the cosine of 2a. But then when I divide by this negative 2, what's going to happen? Well, negative 1 divided by negative 2 is a positive relationship. So I'm just going to erase that sign altogether. And positive cosine of 2a divided by, by negative 2 is a negative relationship. right? So if we divide both terms by the negative 1, but you multiply by 2, I would switch the signs. If you don't like that argument, let me show that in a completely different way real quick. Um, so at this step, you can say, well, um, I have this ratio right here, but let me multiply both the top and the bottom by negative 1 to reverse the signs. And that's where you get, you can, and that's also square root both sides. Sine of a equals plus or minus the square root of, well, negative 1 times everything up here becomes 1 minus the cosine of 2a. And that's over 2. And then we get to our last step by plugging in a over 2, just like over here. This will cancel out, and we get our two last common formulas. These are called the half angle formulas. And we can keep going. There are more formulas to derive, and I'm sure we'll always find other interesting relationships. But we have the half angle formula, we have double angle formula for cosine, we have addition and subtraction formulas, and the double angle formula for sine here. And that's not even talking about tangent yet. But the big point here is that if you know this formula, Right, and you know it's different from the pattern of the cosine where the, the trig ratios aren't mixed up, but the signs are the opposite of what you're looking for. So if you're going for a sum, you're subtracting, and with a sign, you mix the trig ratios up, but the sign matches what you're looking for. You can then take your time and derive as many formulas as you need to analyze the kind of problems you're looking at. Thank you for your time.